Welcome to Mastering the Clock, Strategies for Effective Time Management, brought to you by Mindful Literary. If you've ever found yourself struggling to meet deadlines, juggling countless tasks, or simply wishing there were more hours in the day, this audiobook is for you. Time is our most valuable resource, yet it often feels like there's never enough of it. But what if I told you that mastering the art of time management could transform your life? In this audiobook, I'll take you on a journey through the essentials of effective time management. We'll explore practical strategies and techniques that will not only help you regain control of your time, but also boost your productivity, reduce stress, and ultimately allow you to achieve your goals with greater ease. From setting clear goals to overcoming procrastination, each chapter is designed to provide actionable insights that you can start applying today. This isn't just a guide filled with abstract theories. It's a conversation between you and me, rooted in real-life experiences. I'll share my own struggles and successes with time management, offering you a relatable perspective and a sense of camaraderie as you navigate your own journey. Together, we'll uncover the tools and habits that will empower you to make the most of every moment. So let's dive in and start mastering the clock. Your path to a more organized, efficient, and fulfilling life begins here, with Mindful Literary guiding you every step of the way. Chapter 1. Understanding Time Management The Importance of Time Management I remember a time in my own life when the chaos of juggling work projects, family commitments, and personal goals left me feeling overwhelmed. I often found myself wishing there were more hours in the day. However, once I began to implement effective time management strategies, everything changed. I learned how to prioritize tasks, set realistic goals, and allocate my time according to what truly mattered. It's remarkable how organizing your day can lead to a profound sense of control, reducing stress and increasing productivity. Time, once viewed as an enemy, became my ally. When I grasped the true impact of managing my time wisely, I felt empowered. Good time management helps us meet deadlines, reduces anxiety, and allows us to enjoy our personal lives without the constant nag of unfinished work. It fosters a sense of accomplishment and confidence, which propels us forward to tackle more challenging tasks. Personal anecdotes aside, research supports these claims. Studies show that people who practice time management experience higher job satisfaction and improved efficiency. Embracing this reality inspired me to share my journey and encourage others to harness the power of time management in their own lives. As I delved deeper into this subject, I discovered simple yet powerful techniques that transformed my approach. One of these was the practice of time blocking, setting specific periods to work on tasks without interruption. By doing this, I was able to focus on what truly mattered eliminate distractions, and complete projects much quicker than before. I've also found that reflecting at the end of each week on what worked and what didn't has been invaluable. It's about learning and adjusting, not just pushing through with the same old habits. The beauty of effective time management is that it's entirely adaptable to our unique lives and responsibilities. As you explore these strategies, remember that the goal is to find what resonates with you allowing you to take charge of your time confidently and with ease. Common Misconceptions About Time Management Many believe that effective time management revolves around doing more things in a shorter amount of time. I used to think this way too, constantly chasing after my ever-growing to-do list. However, over time, I learned that this approach often leads to burnout rather than productivity. It's not about squeezing in tasks like a game of Tetris, it's about maximizing productivity without sacrificing your well-being. Focusing on key activities that align with your goals can make a significant difference. When I started prioritizing my mental and physical health, like ensuring I took proper breaks and paced my tasks throughout the day, I noticed a shift in my overall efficiency. Instead of exhaustion, I began to feel energized and accomplished, proving that smarter work trumps sheer volume of work. Debunking myths surrounding time management is essential to understanding what it truly involves. For instance, many think that managing time effectively means being busy all the time. But what it really requires is clarity in prioritization and the ability to say no to distractions. 
When I adopted this mindset, I began seeing time as a precious resource rather than a limit. Techniques like the Pomodoro Technique, where I worked in focused sprints, followed by breaks, empowered me to stay concentrated and refreshed. This shift in perspective helped me realize that effective time management isn't just about fitting in more tasks. Rather, it's about making intentional choices that reflect my values and long-term objectives. It's a different way of thinking, but it can lead to more meaningful accomplishments. Understanding and addressing these misconceptions allows us to approach time management with the right mindset. I encourage you to reflect on your own beliefs about time and how they shape your actions. Consider journaling your current habits versus what you want them to be. By identifying what's holding you back, you can begin to make conscious choices that lead to lasting change. Start small. Perhaps decide to spend 10 minutes each day planning your tasks so you can focus on what truly matters. Remember, effective time management isn't just a skill to learn. It's a mindset that can empower you to master your time, reduce stress, and enhance your overall quality of life. My personal journey with time management. There was a time when I would wake up in the morning feeling a heavy cloud of dread hanging over me, instantly reminding me of the mountain of tasks waiting to be tackled. I vividly remember days where I would sit down to work on my to-do list, only to find myself distracted by social media, a stray thought, or even the flickering light of the television in the background. I felt like I was running a marathon of tasks, but instead of crossing the finish line, I was left gasping for breath, barely making any progress. It didn't take long before I realized that my lack of structure was costing me, not just time, but also peace of mind. These early experiences were full of frustration and overwhelm, and they underscored a crucial lesson. Time management is not just about scheduling tasks, but about managing my own habits and distractions. Looking back, I can see that my struggles were common. Many are in the same boat, trying to find a method that resonates with their lifestyle. As I sought solutions to my chaotic days, I stumbled upon books, seminars, and blogs contrasting the success of those who seemed to have it all together. Slowly, I began to adopt strategies that resonated with me. I initiated small changes, like setting specific and realistic deadlines for tasks and breaking larger projects into bite-sized pieces, which made them feel less daunting. Over time, I honed my ability to prioritize tasks based on their urgency and importance. Celebrating small victories, like completing a challenging task, became a motivating factor that kept me energized. What I discovered was that time management isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. It's more about finding what works uniquely for you. The key takeaway from my experience is that every small effort contributes to building competence and confidence in managing time. I encourage you to embrace the process, acknowledge the learning curve, and remember that with practice and patience, you too can master the art of time management turning what once felt overwhelming into a manageable and fulfilling experience. One practical tip that transformed my journey is to implement the two-minute rule. If a task takes less than two minutes to complete, do it right away. This simple action reduces clutter from your to-do list, freeing up mental space for more substantial projects. It's surprising how quickly those little tasks can add up and steal precious time if left unattended. The key to effective time management lies in consistent practice and a willingness to adapt along the way. Chapter 2. Identifying Time Wasters Recognizing Your Biggest Distractions I remember a time when I thought being busy meant I was productive. I filled my days with tasks, constantly juggling multiple demands without ever realizing how much time I was actually wasting. It wasn't until I took a hard look at my daily routine that I started to uncover the true culprits stealing my time. Social media notifications, incessant emails, and even that one friend who always pops by unannounced became clear distractions that chipped away at my focus. Becoming aware of these interruptions felt like opening my eyes to a world of possibilities. It was liberating to name the distractions. Once I identified them, I could start to take action to mitigate their impact. I found that keeping a journal for a week where I noted what I did every hour was an eye-opening experience that highlighted just how often I fell into the trap of distraction. 
I thought I was mastering my time until I spent an afternoon realizing how mindlessly I scrolled through endless feeds. Each little break turned into an hour lost. The revelation was startling, but it was also an opportunity. When I started to track everything, I noticed patterns emerging. The time I spent on those distractions wasn't just a few minutes here and there. It added up to substantial blocks of my day. By pinpointing those mindless habits, I was able to chisel away at them, replacing them with productive actions that aligned more closely with my goals. It's amazing how much control we can regain when we take the time to understand our routines. Simple tweaks, like turning off notifications or setting strict boundaries around technology use during work hours, can help create a more focused environment. As you reflect on your day-to-day -day activities, take note of how often you drift into distractions. The key isn't to eliminate all potential distractions, but to have a clear understanding of what they are and how they affect your productivity. Start small by choosing a week to monitor your own habits without judgment. At the end of the week, review your findings. It could surprise you to see where your time actually goes, empowering you to make changes that foster greater focus and productivity. Remember, it's not about perfection, but progress. By understanding and addressing your distractions, you'll find a greater sense of control over your time and an undeniable confidence in your ability to achieve your goals. The role of technology in time waste. I can't count the times I've sat down to work with a clear goal in mind, only to find myself scrolling through my social media feeds or getting sucked into a rabbit hole of online articles. It happens to the best of us. Technology, which is designed to make our lives easier, can quickly become a source of constant interruptions, pulling our focus away from the tasks that truly matter. The ping of a notification can derail our concentration, turning our deep focus into snippets of thought that jump from task to task, leaving us feeling unfulfilled and frustrated at the end of the day. Understanding this dichotomy between productivity and distraction is crucial. It's like trying to utilize a powerful tool while being constantly aware that it can cut both ways. It involves creating boundaries and being intentional about our technology interactions. For example, I've started setting specific times to check my emails and social media rather than allowing those notifications to dictate my workflow. This small change has had a huge impact on my productivity. Alongside this, I've found it useful to turn on do not disturb modes during work hours. By being proactive about how I use technology, I regain control over my time, allowing me to focus on my goals without falling into the passive trap of endless scrolling or mindless clicking. Remember that it's not just about cutting out distractions, but also about making the technology work for you rather than against you. This approach empowers us to manage our time with greater confidence and ease. How I overcame my time thieves. Over the years, I have battled numerous distractions that threatened to steal my precious time. It all started with my penchant for procrastination, which seemed harmless at first. I would tell myself that I just needed a little break or that I would get to it later. But as I let those moments snowball, I found myself rushing to finish tasks at the last minute, feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Realizing that these distractions, like endless scrolling on social media or binge watching shows, where my time thieves became my wake-up call. Sharing these experiences not only helps me reflect on my journey, but also offers a chance to connect with others who may feel the same way. Many of us have experienced that sinking feeling of having wasted time, and discussing these moments adds a layer of authenticity to our struggles. As I began to confront my time thieves, I discovered strategies that transformed my approach to managing distractions. One practical solution was setting clear boundaries around my time. For example, I started using the Pomodoro technique, working in focused bursts of 25 minutes, followed by short breaks. This method empowered me to minimize interruptions and maintain concentration without feeling burnt out. I also explored creating a dedicated workspace that signaled to my brain it was time to focus. By doing so, I freed myself from the chaos of multitasking and felt more in control of my environment. Additionally, I began to journal my progress, documenting how I spent my time each day. This allowed me to identify patterns, recognize when distractions crept in, 
and adjust my tactics accordingly. These are the actionable steps I implemented, simple yet powerful adjustments that help me reclaim my time. When distractions arise, it can feel daunting to push them aside and stay on track. Yet, by acknowledging our time thieves and implementing specific strategies, we can regain control over how we allocate our hours. I encourage you to start by recognizing your own distractions and experimenting with different techniques to see what works best for you. Whether it's setting timers, creating a distraction-free zone, or simply prioritizing tasks, every small change can lead to significant improvement in managing your time. One effective tip is to schedule a distraction-free hour in your day where you commit to focusing entirely on your most important task. This simple practice can make a world of difference in enhancing productivity and creating a sense of accomplishment. Chapter three, setting clear goals. The SMART goal framework. Understanding the SMART criteria is like discovering a hidden roadmap that leads to clear and achievable goals. Each letter in SMART stands for something essential, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. When I first learned about this framework, I was amazed at how it simplified my goal-setting process. Instead of vaguely wishing to get better at my job, I started to think in terms of specifics, like I will complete three online courses related to my field by the end of the quarter. This not only gave me clarity, but also a structured plan that guided my actions day by day. Visually, it's like having a compass that helps me navigate the often overwhelming journey of personal and professional development. Applying the SMART framework can truly transform your aspirations from mere thoughts floating in your mind to tangible, actionable objectives. A few years ago, I decided to run a marathon. However, I knew that just saying I want to run a marathon wouldn't be enough. By breaking it down through the SMART criteria, I established a clear path. I would run three times a week, gradually increasing my distance and register for a specific marathon taking place in six months. This shift turned a vague desire into a structured plan that kept me accountable. I learned that when you have a solid framework in place, you can tackle even the most daunting challenges with more confidence and less anxiety because you're no longer wandering aimlessly, but moving purposefully toward your goal. Creating your SMART goals can also be a fun and reflective practice. Think of it as writing a personal contract with yourself, where you get to define what success looks like for you. Take a moment to write down your goals and break them down using the SMART criteria. You might discover that some of your aspirations need a little refining, while others may become clear declarations of intent. The important thing is to remain flexible and open to change as you embark on this journey. Adopting this practical approach not only empowers you, but also fosters a sense of control, making it easier to celebrate your achievements along the way. Start by asking yourself, what's one specific goal I can set today that excites me? This simple question could be the beginning of something extraordinary. Short-term versus long-term goals. When I first started outlining my objectives, I struggled to see how immediate tasks tied into my broader aspirations. I often found myself getting lost in the weeds of day-to-day -day activities, caught up in what felt urgent rather than what was truly important. Short-term goals are like stepping stones, tangible, achievable milestones that keep your momentum going. They give you quick wins and a sense of accomplishment. For instance, when I wanted to get fitter, my short-term goal was to exercise three times a week. It was manageable and motivating, leading to the long-term vision of running a half marathon. By clearly delineating these types of goals, I learned to prioritize my time better and focus on what needed my immediate attention while keeping my broader dreams in sight. It's easy to get swept away in the urgency of what needs to be done today, yet remembering why you're doing it adds purpose to every task. I often use a simple method Whenever I set a short-term goal, I ask myself how it contributes to my long-term aspirations. This alignment provides clarity and motivation. For example, if my long-term goal is to build a successful freelance writing career, then my short-term goals might include pitching five articles a week or dedicating an hour daily to improving my writing skills. This method ensures that every small victory takes me a step closer to my larger dreams. 
The key is to embrace both short-term wins and long-term ambitions, allowing them to fuel each other. Consider integrating this approach into your life. Start by identifying one long-term goal and breaking it down into smaller, manageable tasks that you can tackle in the next week or month. This not only alleviates overwhelm, but also cultivates a sense of progress as you accomplish each task. Celebrating those small victories along the way helps maintain motivation and reinforces your belief in what you can achieve. The next time you find yourself tangled in your to-do list, pause and reflect on how each task serves your greater vision. This practice will empower you to use your time more effectively and with a renewed sense of purpose. Reflecting on my goal-setting experiences. There was a time when I set my sights on writing a novel, driven by excitement and the dream of seeing my name on a published book. I vividly remember the initial rush of energy as I mapped out my plot and developed characters, but soon after, the reality of managing my time hit hard. Weeks turned into months, and I found my enthusiasm waning. It wasn't just about setting the goal, it was about the commitment to see it through. An early failure taught me that reflection is key. I began to regularly assess my progress, acknowledging those moments when I fell short. This practice not only helped me remain accountable, but also opened my eyes to the need for adjusting my strategies. By understanding what didn't work, I was able to identify new paths forward, leading me ultimately to completion. Each setback became a valuable lesson in resilience. One significant takeaway was the realization that flexibility is essential in goal setting. After my first attempt at writing a novel, I adjusted my approach by breaking the larger goal into smaller, more manageable milestones. Instead of aiming to write an entire book in a year, I focused on writing a chapter a month. This shift allowed me to celebrate small victories, which fueled my motivation. Furthermore, I learned to be kind to myself during the process. Sometimes life throws curveballs, and it's okay to recalibrate. Setting timelines that accommodate unexpected changes helped me to stay on course without feeling overwhelmed. Day by day, I found that this reflective practice not only kept me motivated, but also instilled a deep sense of control over my journey. It's about mastering the art of setting goals that are not only attainable, but also aligned with who you are. With every adjustment, I grew not just as a writer, but as a person. Embracing reflection in goal setting can profoundly change how you approach your objectives. Ask yourself, what methods do you use to stay accountable to your goals? Establishing a simple journaling habit could be your first step toward meaningful reflection. Take a few minutes each week to review your progress and consider what adjustments are necessary. This practice can empower you to refine your goals continuously, ensuring that they remain relevant and achievable. Chapter 4, Prioritization Techniques The Eisenhower Matrix Explained The Eisenhower Matrix is a powerful tool that helps categorize tasks into four distinct quadrants based on urgency and importance. This framework clarifies the often blurry lines between what demands immediate attention and what is truly significant in the long run. When I first encountered the matrix, it felt like someone had handed me a map in the chaos of my daily routine, allowing me to navigate through overwhelming to-do lists more effectively. I learned to evaluate my tasks by asking whether they were urgent, important, both, or neither. This simple yet profound shift in perspective enabled me to prioritize tasks that genuinely mattered, stripping away the noise of daily distractions and focusing on what aligned with my goals. By utilizing the Eisenhower matrix, I found that not only could I enhance my productivity, but I could also dramatically reduce the stress that often accompanies a crowded schedule. We all know that feeling of racing against time, where deadlines loom large and every task seems demanding our immediate attention. This method fosters a sense of control, guiding us to tackle what's essential rather than merely what's pressing. I remember a time when I was swamped with work responding to emails and attending meetings that felt urgent but didn't contribute to my long-term objectives. By sorting those tasks into the matrix, I could clearly see which were fictitious fires requiring my direct involvement and which could be delegated or set aside for later. As we lead our busy lives, the Eisenhower matrix empowers us to step back 
and assess our daily activities with a discerning eye. This approach not only allows us to allocate our time and energy wisely, but also fosters a profound sense of peace and well-being. One practical tip I've embraced is to take a few minutes at the end of each day to reflect on the tasks I've accomplished and to plan for the next day using this matrix. By identifying which quadrant each task falls into, I can prioritize my next day's efforts, helping me to wake up with a clear, actionable plan, ready to tackle what truly matters. ABCD Prioritization Method I vividly remember the cluttered feeling of my to-do list. It seemed endless, and I was constantly overwhelmed. The breakthrough came when I stumbled upon the ABCD Prioritization Method. This simple technique encourages you to categorize your tasks into four groups. A for the most important, B for important but less urgent, C for nice to do, and D for tasks that can be delegated or eliminated. By implementing this approach, I noticed a profound shift in how I managed my daily responsibilities. No longer was I drowning in a sea of tasks. Instead, I began to focus on what truly mattered, dedicating my energy to the A tasks first, allowing my productivity to soar. As I adopted the ABCD method, I discovered how much clearer my priorities became. With each passing day, I became more confident in distinguishing between what was critical and what could wait. This clarity was liberating. I could finally visualize which tasks would directly contribute to my goals and which were merely distractions. I remember one day in particular when I was able to finish my most challenging project ahead of schedule because I prioritized it effectively. It was a win that not only sparked my motivation, but also built my confidence. By using a framework like ABCD, you empower yourself to make intentional choices about where to invest your time. This simple order of operations allows you to reclaim your day, turning what once felt chaotic into a manageable series of steps. When faced with an overwhelming list, consider jotting down each task and sorting them into the ABCD categories. You might be surprised at how it transforms your perspective. Lessons from my prioritization fails. There have been moments in my life where I thought I had my priorities straight, only to discover that I was in over my head. I remember a time when I was juggling multiple projects at work while trying to maintain a semblance of a social life. I felt invincible, confident that I could tackle everything on my plate. However, as deadlines loomed and tasks piled up, I found myself overwhelmed, unable to focus, and ultimately letting some crucial responsibilities slip through the cracks. This experience taught me that being busy doesn't necessarily equal being productive. Instead of pushing through, I should have stepped back to assess what truly needed my attention. These missteps turned out to be valuable learning opportunities, and sharing them reinforces the idea that we all struggle with prioritization at times. After each setback, I realized the importance of reflection. I began to analyze what went wrong and how I could adjust my approach in the future. Implementing a system where I evaluated my commitments weekly became crucial. This check-in allowed me to shed tasks that weren't aligned with my goals and priorities. It's a reminder that the landscape of our responsibilities changes constantly and being flexible is essential. Embracing the idea of trial and error helped me cultivate a more resilient mindset. Today, I approach my to-do lists with curiosity rather than dread, knowing that prioritization is not a one-time fix, but a journey of self-discovery and adaptation. One practical tip from my journey is to consider the 80-20 rule. Recognizing that 20% of your efforts may yield 80% of the results can help guide your focus and ensure you invest your time wisely. Chapter 5. Creating a Schedule That Works Different Types of Scheduling Methods Every person's day looks different, with unique responsibilities, commitments, and rhythms. I've tried my fair share of scheduling techniques over the years, from rigid planners to flexible digital tools. Each method offered insights into how I could manage my time better. For instance, I once adopted the Pomodoro Technique, breaking my work into focused intervals followed by short breaks. Initially, it felt a bit limiting, but I quickly realized that having those breaks allowed me more energy and focus. It was like giving my brain a refreshing stretch, and it turned a long workday into manageable chunks. There's something empowering about discovering which scheduling method resonates with your own needs. 
Whether it's the structure of time blocking or the spontaneity of simply jotting down daily tasks as they come. Each method has its charm and effectiveness, but it's about finding what clicks for you. When I began to grasp that not all schedules have to look the same, it opened a whole new world of possibilities. Standard planners can be useful, but they don't always cater to everyone's needs, especially when life throws unexpected changes our way. I started experimenting with a mix of digital calendars and handwritten notes, allowing me to see the bigger picture while still feeling the satisfaction of checking things off. This flexibility brought a sense of peace in my chaotic life. The more I learned about different approaches, from prioritizing tasks with the Eisenhower matrix to setting weekly goals in reflection, the more equipped I felt to take on my commitments. Practical examples of scheduling methods can be trialed with minimal investment. You could start by simply observing how each method fits into a week and adjust as necessary. Are you more productive in the morning? Perhaps a time-blocking approach with specific activities scheduled could work best. Embracing these strategies gives you the power to shape your day intentionally, making every moment count. Time blocking for maximum productivity. When I first encountered this method, I had my doubts. How could I restrict my time with such precision and still get everything done? The truth is, time blocking transformed my daily routine. By reserving specific blocks of time for tasks, I could keep my attention locked on what mattered most. Picture this. Instead of flitting between emails, meetings, and a myriad of tasks, I set aside distinct time slots on my calendar. During those times, I dedicated myself completely to the task at hand, whether it was writing, brainstorming, or even catching up on emails. This approach significantly reduced the constant mental chatter that had previously pulled my focus. It was as if I found a quiet sanctuary in my day, where I could dive deep into my work without interruption. This consistent, structured approach created a rhythm that made the hours flow more smoothly, enabling me to accomplish more. I vividly remember a period when everything felt scattered. My mind was racing through a long list of to-dos, and the unease of unfinished tasks loomed over me. Then, a mentor introduced me to time blocking, advising me to take an hour each morning to dedicate to my writing. I committed to this, and what happened next was eye-opening. Those 60 minutes became a sacred time where creativity flowed freely, and I found myself producing work I was genuinely proud of. Not only did I complete my projects more quickly, but I also enjoyed the process. Engaging more deeply with tasks led to a sense of fulfillment. Each block became a mini productive sprint, and I started to look forward to these segments of my day. They weren't just about getting things done. They became opportunities to immerse myself in what I loved and to experience real progress. By embracing time blocking, I've discovered a powerful way to regain control over my schedule and increase my overall productivity. It's not just a method, it's a mindset shift. Moving forward, consider trying this technique for yourself. Start with something simple. Perhaps allocate 30 minutes to a particular project without distractions. Use a timer and see how much you can accomplish. You might be surprised at how quickly you can move through your tasks when you pair time blocking with focused engagement. Understanding that time is your most precious resource empowers you to make conscious choices about how to spend it. The key is not just to fill your calendar, but to intentionally design your days around what truly matters to you. How I found my perfect scheduling rhythm. Finding the right scheduling rhythm took me a good bit of trial and error, and I think that's important to share. I remember diving into various time management techniques, one week eagerly trying out a strict block schedule. I filled every hour of my day with a task, believing that the rigid structure would spark productivity. However, I quickly discovered that my creativity thrived in flexibility, leading to more frustration than fulfillment. So I switched gears and attempted a more fluid approach, allowing myself to ride the natural waves of my energy levels. Some days were incredibly productive, where ideas flowed and tasks were accomplished with enthusiasm. Other days felt like I was wading through mud, which eventually forced me to reflect on the importance of experimentation in finding a rhythm that truly suited me. This journey of experimentation taught me that what works for one person might not work for another. 
I encourage readers to analyze their unique patterns and preferences. Ask yourself questions like, when do I feel most energized? Or which tasks drain me and which ones invigorate me? One of my biggest revelations came from simply tracking my energy levels throughout the day and noticing that my most productive hours were in the late morning and early afternoon. Tailoring my schedule to capitalize on these peak times made a significant difference in my productivity and overall satisfaction. By making tiny adjustments and being open to new methods, I learned to customize my schedule, ultimately allowing me to juggle my responsibilities with grace and ease. As you embark on your own scheduling journey, remember that flexibility can be your best friend. It's about crafting a routine that feels good for you rather than blindly following a formula. A practical tip? Try experimenting for a week. Keep a time log where you note your tasks, the time spent on each, and how you felt about your productivity at the end of the day. After a week, look for patterns and see where adjustments could be made. This simple exercise can provide enlightening insights and help you establish a rhythm that feels just right for you, turning the chaos of time management into a harmonious dance. Chapter six, the magic of daily routines, morning routines for success. When I first started focusing on my mornings, I realized how much control I could gain over my day just by rising a bit earlier and planning my time effectively. Waking up with intention rather than rushing through the morning, sets a tone that resonates throughout the entire day. I began by integrating small changes, like stretching for a few minutes, drinking a glass of water, and prioritizing my tasks for the day. These simple acts not only made me feel more awake, but also directed my mindset toward productivity. With a clear plan in place and energy flowing through my body, I found myself embracing whatever challenges the day threw my way. I discovered that incorporating mindfulness practices such as meditation or gratitude journaling could amplify the benefits of a good morning routine. These practices helped clear my mind and brought clarity to my goals. I often reflect on mornings when I devoted those few quiet moments to center myself. How much different my mindset was compared to days when I jumped straight into tasks without thought. Engaging in positive habits, like reading for a short while or enjoying a nutritious breakfast, further contributes to this uplifted state. By intentionally designing my mornings, I noticed a consistent boost in my creativity and problem-solving abilities, allowing me to tackle my projects with confidence. The beauty of morning routines lies in their adaptability to fit individual lifestyles. Whether you're a night owl or an early bird, the key is to find what works best for you. Consider experimenting with different elements. Perhaps you thrive with a brisk morning walk or prefer to spend time planning your day over a cup of tea. I've found that curating a mix of energizing and calming activities allows for an effective balance. Even if you start with just five or 10 minutes of a routine, the immediate effects can be quite transformative. Remember, the goal is not perfection, but progress. Take small steps towards establishing a routine that resonates with you. A practical tip is to prepare the night before. Lay out your clothes, pack your lunch, and set aside your morning activity tools. This extra effort minimizes decision fatigue in the morning, granting you more time to focus on what truly matters as you start your day. Evening routines to wind down. I've learned that the end of the day doesn't have to feel like a chaotic race to the finish line. Instead, it can be a gentle glide into a restful night. Years ago, I was stuck in the habit of answering emails or checking my phone right before bed, convinced that I was being productive. It took me a while to realize that this actually left me feeling frazzled rather than relaxed. I started experimenting with small changes, like dimming the lights an hour before bed and putting my phone on Do Not Disturb. Gradually, I noticed that these shifts created a serene environment signaling my body and mind that it was time to unwind. Engaging in soothing activities, such as reading a book or sipping a warm herbal tea, not only helps me disconnect from the day's stress, but also prepares me for a restful sleep. It's amazing how something as simple as establishing a bedtime ritual can transform your quality of life. Personally, I've found that incorporating mindfulness techniques, such as gentle stretching or deep breathing exercises, 
into my evening routine signals my body to release tension accumulated throughout the day. Even just five minutes of reflection or gratitude can shift my mindset and encourage a sense of calm. The goal here isn't perfection. It's about establishing habits that nourish us. When we take the time to recharge in the evenings, we wake up not only better rested, but also more focused and ready to tackle whatever the new day brings. Prioritizing our wind down time can lead to more effective days, greater productivity, and an overall sense of control in our lives. One practical tip is to set a specific time each evening to start your wind down routine. Make it a non-negotiable part of your day, just like brushing your teeth or having dinner. It doesn't have to be lengthy. Even a half hour can be effective. Decide on a few calming activities that resonate with you and commit to them. This creates a beautiful rhythm, allowing your body to anticipate and embrace the peacefulness of the night ahead. My transformation through routines. A few years ago, I found myself struggling to keep up with the demands of work and personal commitments. Each day felt like I was juggling too many balls in the air, and it seemed like I'd drop one at any moment. I was overwhelmed, often working late into the night, and I had little time left for myself or my family. Realizing that something needed to change, I decided to take a step back and reevaluate how I managed my days. Gradually, I began to implement simple routines that brought a surprising sense of order to my chaotic life. Whether it was setting aside 10 minutes each morning for planning and prioritizing, or dedicating specific hours to focused work without distractions, these small changes transformed not just my productivity, but my overall well-being. I became more present with my loved ones, and I discovered a renewed enthusiasm for my work. Emphasizing that small changes can lead to significant improvements in time management and productivity became central to my journey. It was astonishing to see how tiny adjustments, like creating a checklist for my daily tasks or establishing a winding down ritual before bed, could ripple through my day creating an atmosphere of calm and focus. Time management was not about cramming more into my day. It was about making better choices with the same 24 hours. For instance, I started blocking out dedicated time for deep work without interruptions, which allowed me to dive deeply into projects and complete them more efficiently. Each modification to my routine was a stepping stone, leading me to greater control over my time and ultimately my life. It's these incremental changes that provided me with the confidence to tackle larger goals, showing me that with the right framework, anything is achievable. Understanding that routines form the backbone of effective time management and productivity empowers me to share these insights with you. Consider adopting just one new routine this week, whether that be carving out time each day for reflection or simply setting up a consistent end-of-workday ritual to signal the transition to personal time. The key is to experiment with what works for you and to stay flexible. It's in these small, manageable steps that you can reclaim control over your time, making your days not just more productive, but more fulfilling. Embrace the power of routines and watch as the small changes form the foundation of a more balanced and optimistic life. Chapter 7. The Power of Saying No Understanding the Freedom in Refusal There was a time in my life when my calendar was packed with obligations and I often felt overwhelmed. Every time I was asked to participate in something, be it a work project, a social gathering, or a family obligation, I would instinctively say yes. My desire to please others led me to a point where I was stretched thin, juggling commitments that drained my energy and left little room for what truly mattered to me. It was only when I started to acknowledge the value of refusal that I began to feel liberated. By saying no, I made space for my own priorities, allowing me to allocate time to the people and activities that truly brought me joy. This realization was empowering. I learned that every time I said no, I was also saying yes to myself and my needs. That shift in perspective was profound. Setting limits became my new superpower. I started viewing my time as a valuable resource that I had the right to control. When I embraced my ability to refuse, the chaos began to settle, and I could concentrate on what truly mattered. I found myself thriving, attending to my personal and professional goals without the guilt of letting others down. 
For instance, I remember declining an invitation to a social event that I didn't feel enthusiastic about. In the past, I would have felt compelled to go, but being able to say no without explanation freed me to spend that evening in quiet reflection or diving into a project that needed my attention. The more I practiced this, the more I felt a sense of empowerment surge within me, enhancing my focus on my priorities and enriching my life. To implement this in your own life, start small. Practice saying no to low priority requests and recognize how that small act makes you feel. This isn't about being rude or dismissive, it's about valuing your time and your choices. As you grow more comfortable with refusing, you'll notice a shift not only in your schedule, but also in your mindset. Saying no is not a statement of rejection, it's a declaration of self-respect. So go ahead, reclaim your time, and begin to foster boundaries that allow you to flourish. A practical tip, dedicate the last 10 minutes of your workday to evaluate your upcoming commitments and confidently triage them. If something feels like it's stretching you too thin, let go of it. By practicing the art of refusal each day, you'll regain control, leading to a more fulfilling and focused life. Techniques for politely declining owling. I still remember a time when I felt overwhelmed by requests. Friends wanted favors, colleagues asked for help on projects, and family had their needs. It was a delicate dance of wanting to support others while also feeling stretched too thin. By learning to say no gracefully, I've not only retained my sanity, but also strengthened my relationships. When I politely declined a friend's invitation, explaining my need for personal time, she appreciated my honesty. This taught me that being transparent doesn't damage connections. It actually fosters respect and understanding. One effective method I've adopted is the sandwich approach, where I begin with a positive statement, express my inability to fulfill the request, and then close with another encouraging remark. For instance, instead of simply saying no to volunteering for an event, I might say, I love that you're organizing this and truly appreciate the invite, but I can't commit right now. I'm sure it will be a fantastic event. This has a way of keeping the conversation warm and maintaining a positive tone. Another strategy involves setting boundaries early on, making it easier to refuse later requests. For example, Discussing my workload during initial project meetings sets the expectation that I can't take on additional tasks without feeling overwhelmed, making future declines easier and less fraught with guilt. I find it essential to remember that saying no is a skill, one that can empower us instead of confining us. Each time I practice polite refusal, it reinforces the idea that my time and energy are valuable. It's about carving out space for what truly matters to me. Whenever you feel that pressure to comply, take a moment to assess. It's perfectly okay to prioritize your well-being, and mastering the art of saying no will ultimately lead to a healthier balance in your life. The next time you're faced with a request that doesn't align with your priorities, try the techniques mentioned and notice how it transforms your interactions. My struggles with saying no. There was a time when my calendar was overflowing with meetings, social events, and obligations, leaving me drained and overwhelmed. I often felt compelled to say yes, driven by a desire to please others and avoid disappointing them. This led to a cycle of stress and exhaustion, where I found myself juggling too many tasks, often prioritizing what others needed over my own well-being. It was a constant battle between wanting to help and recognizing my limitations. Each time I said yes, I felt a fleeting sense of accomplishment, but it was quickly overshadowed by the anxiety of an overly packed schedule. I realized that my inability to say no not only strained my relationships, but also stifled my personal growth. I was left with little time to focus on projects that truly fueled my passion and allowed me to thrive. Gradually, I learned that saying no is not an act of rejection, but rather a form of self-respect. It took practice and patience, but I started to set clear boundaries that aligned with my goals. Each time I declined an invitation or pushed back on an extra task, I reclaimed a piece of my time. I discovered the importance of reflecting on my values and commitments before responding. By doing so, I became more intentional about how I spent my time. This transformative journey not only enhanced my time management skills, but it also rebuilt my confidence. I began to feel empowered 
recognizing that my time is a precious resource. I encourage others to explore this path, understanding that by prioritizing their own needs, they can show up more fully for others when it truly matters. Practical tip, when faced with a request, take a moment to pause and consider whether the commitment aligns with your goals or values. If it doesn't, practice a simple phrase like, I appreciate the offer, but I have to decline this time. This straightforward approach can help ease the tension of saying no, allowing you to manage your time more effectively while maintaining your relationships. Chapter 8, Tools and Apps for Time Management Overview of my favorite productivity apps. In my own journey of seeking balance and efficiency, I've come across several apps that have truly transformed the way I organize my life. For instance, I found that using a to-do list app like Todoist not only helped me keep track of tasks, but also empowered me to prioritize them effectively. The satisfaction of checking off completed tasks after a long day adds a tangible sense of accomplishment that keeps me motivated. Similarly, time tracking apps like Toggle have made it easier for me to see where my hours go. By understanding how I spend my time, I can make adjustments to improve my productivity while also carving out moments for rest and rejuvenation. When exploring productivity apps, it's essential to consider what features resonate most with you. Some might benefit from a clean interface for simple task management, while others might crave advanced features like collaboration tools or integration with calendars. For example, apps like Notion offer a highly customizable experience that allows users to build their own workspaces, blending notes, tasks, and wikis in one unified platform. I remember the first time I organized my weekly schedule in Notion. The flexibility of toggling between various views made planning incredibly enjoyable. Ultimately, the right app should feel like an extension of your own brain, simplifying the complexities of daily tasks rather than adding to them. By investing time in finding the right tool, you'll be better equipped to manage your day-to-day -day effectively, leading to a more structured and fulfilling routine. Empowerment through practical examples is key. Take the time to explore these apps, perhaps starting with the free versions before committing to any subscriptions. Don't shy away from experimenting with different layouts or features that may catch your interest. You might find that setting aside just 10 minutes each evening to plan the next day with an app can work wonders for your productivity and peace of mind. Just remember, the goal of using these tools is not to add stress, but to craft a more manageable and enjoyable life. How to choose the right tools for you. Choosing the right time management tools can feel overwhelming, especially with so many options available. I remember when I first started exploring different tools, I'd download app after app, only to find that they all felt wrong for me. What I learned is that the best tool is one that fits your unique style and needs. It's essential to consider how you work best. Do you prefer visual representations of your day, like a calendar? Or do you thrive in a to-do list system that lets you check off tasks? Self-reflection plays a critical role here. Jot down your preferences and habits. What works for you might not work for someone else, and that's perfectly okay. When selecting your tools, think about your personal workflow and look for features that support it. Don't hesitate to experiment until you find what clicks. Understanding your personal workflow is an eye-opening process that can dramatically improve how you utilize your resources. For instance, I discovered that I am much more productive in the mornings, which led me to prioritize high-energy tasks during that window. Recognizing this timing allowed me to align my most important projects with my natural energy levels. Take a moment to analyze your day. When do you feel most focused? Are there certain activities that drain your energy? By dissecting your workflow, you can tailor your use of time management tools to match your productivity peaks and valleys. This means if you know you get easily distracted in the afternoon, you can schedule routine tasks instead of bigger projects for that time, leaving your brain fresher for what truly matters. As you explore the interplay between your workflow and the tools at your disposal, Consider integrating a few strategies to keep everything cohesive. One practical tip I found invaluable was the use of time blocking. By assigning specific blocks of time for tasks,
based on their urgency and my personal energy levels, I could create a more structured day that feels less chaotic. Moreover, many digital tools offer reminders that I could set for those blocks, helping me stay on track. Remember, incorporating a system that resonates with you means you'll be more inclined to stick with it and feel a sense of control over your day. As you experiment, keep in mind that the goal isn't to fill every minute with work, but to find balance that leads you toward your objectives without feeling burnt out. Lessons learned from tech overload. I vividly remember the days when I juggled multiple devices, each demanding my attention. The smartphone buzzing with notifications, the laptop open with countless tabs, and the tablet beckoning with exciting new apps. It quickly became overwhelming, making me feel like I was losing grip on what truly mattered. There were moments when I would stare at a screen for hours, trying to keep up with everything, only to find myself exhausted and less productive. It took some painful realizations to understand that the problems weren't merely the tools I was using, but how I was using them. Recognizing the signs of tech overload transformed my approach to technology and its role in my life. One effective technique I've found is to curate my digital environment. I began by decluttering my devices, removing apps and programs that added little value to my day-to-day -day activities. This meant I deleted social media notifications, simplified my email inbox, and set boundaries around when I would check messages. By doing this, I was able to create a space that felt more tranquil and less chaotic. Each time I sat down to work, I noticed a remarkable difference. With fewer distractions, I could concentrate better. Alongside decluttering, I also embraced the practice of batching tasks, dedicating specific times to handle emails, phone calls, and project work. This method not only enhanced my efficiency, but also bolstered my sense of control over my time. Ultimately, these experiences taught me that gaining mastery over technology isn't about eliminating it entirely, but rather using it wisely. It's about finding the right balance that works for each of us. As you navigate your relationship with technology, consider adopting a mindset of intentionality. Start small by assessing the tools you frequently use. Ask yourself if they truly serve your goals or add unnecessary complexity. By implementing even a few of these strategies, you can reclaim precious moments in your day and foster a more productive, focused approach to the tasks at hand. Remember, the journey to mastering your time isn't about perfection. It's about progress and creating a harmonious blend between your digital and real-life experiences. Chapter 9. Building a Productive Work Environment Organizing Your Space for Efficiency I've experienced this firsthand, and it was initially surprising how much clarity came from having a tidy environment. I remember struggling to concentrate on important projects while surrounded by clutter. Each item on my desk seemed to scream for attention, pulling me away from the task at hand. Once I started to consciously organize my space, I noticed a significant shift in my ability to focus. It's not just about aesthetics. It's about creating an atmosphere that encourages creativity and efficiency. You'd be amazed at what a clean desk can do for your motivation and energy levels, allowing you to dive right into work without feeling overwhelmed by distractions. Begin by evaluating what you have. Is every item on your desk adding value to your work? I found it helpful to categorize items into three groups, keep, toss, and donate. Just like my approach to decluttering my closet, the same principle applies. Once I had decided what to keep, everything had its designated spot. Regularly reviewing and reassessing items ensured that clutter didn't sneak back in. I also recommend utilizing organizers and storage solutions that suit your style. For instance, I invested in a few drawer dividers and file organizers that not only helped keep documents in check, but also brought a sense of order. Small changes can make a huge difference transforming a chaotic workspace into a calm and productive haven. One actionable tip to try is implementing a clean-as-you-go policy. This means taking a few moments at the end of your work session to tidy up your space. It becomes a habit that will save you from future overwhelm. Creating a designated home for everything reduces decision fatigue during your workday, ultimately giving you back precious minutes that you can spend focusing on your work instead of searching for that all-important document. Remember, 
Organizing your workspace isn't just about how it looks, it's about how it allows you to function, creating a mindset of efficiency and readiness for the tasks ahead. The role of minimalism in productivity. Embracing minimalism can significantly reduce distractions and create a clearer mental landscape for focused work. When I first started my journey towards minimalism, I noticed how much my environment impacted my ability to concentrate. Cluttered desks and chaotic spaces filled with unnecessary items didn't just take up physical space, they invaded my mental space too. I often found myself distracted by a myriad of things that didn't truly matter. However, once I made the conscious decision to purge my workspace of items that didn't serve a purpose, I experienced a remarkable shift in focus. The minimalistic approach allowed me to hone in on my thoughts, tackling tasks with a newfound clarity. I discovered that by stripping away the excess, I was left only with the essentials that inspired creativity and efficiency. This clean slate cultivated an atmosphere where ideas could flourish without the usual noise of distraction, leading to enhanced productivity. Readers looking to design their own productive spaces can explore minimalist principles as a roadmap. Begin by evaluating your environment and identifying what truly deserves a place in your workspace. I found it helpful to ask myself a simple question. Does this item support my goals? For instance, I decided to keep only my essential tools, my laptop, a notebook, and a few carefully chosen decorations that sparked joy. Removing items that didn't serve an immediate purpose allowed the most important tools to stand out, making them more accessible whenever I needed them. Additionally, consider the layout of your space. Keeping things within arm's reach reduces the temptation to get sidetracked, which can derail your productivity. A clean workspace not only looks inviting, but also promotes a sense of calm, making it easier to engage deeply with your work. Incorporating minimalism doesn't have to be an overwhelming task. Start with small steps, like decluttering your desk or creating a dedicated workspace free from distractions. Even the act of organizing your digital files can lead to a more focused mind. I found that a simple folder structure on my computer helped me locate necessary documents quickly, eliminating the frustration of searching through digital chaos. Set up a routine to regularly assess and clean your workspace, ensuring it remains a sanctuary for productivity. Remember, minimalism is not about deprivation. It is about making space for what truly matters. When you prioritize your environment and strip it down to the fundamentals, you equip yourself with the tools to manage your time effectively while nurturing your creativity and focus. The remarkable benefit is that by mastering your surroundings, you can also master your time with greater confidence and ease. My experience redesigning my workspace. When I first began to think about my workspace, it felt overwhelmingly cluttered and uninspiring. The chaos of papers stacked high and the poorly organized tools made it difficult to focus. I realized that my physical environment was directly affecting my mental clarity and productivity. So I made a decision to change it. I started by decluttering. I removed everything that didn't serve a purpose or inspire me. Creating an intentional workspace allowed me to foster not just a sense of organization, but also a feeling of calm. Each item in my redesigned workspace now has meaning and purpose, creating an environment where I feel motivated to work. It became a space that reflects who I am and what I want to achieve, grounded in beauty and functionality. First, take a moment to assess your own environment and consider how it makes you feel. Are there distractions or elements that demotivate you? Identify what can be removed or rearranged. Think about the essentials that enhance your work. Incorporate elements that inspire you, perhaps a piece of art, plants, or quotes that resonate with your mission. A well-thought-out workspace can reclaim your focus and energy, making it easier to tackle tasks with enthusiasm. It doesn't have to be a huge investment. Even small changes, like using a more ergonomic chair or ensuring good lighting, can make a significant difference. As I navigated this redesign process, I also discovered the importance of a routine that complements my new environment. Establishing rituals around my workspace, like taking a few moments to meditate before diving into projects or prioritizing my tasks on a visible whiteboard, has changed how I approach my work. These practices not only enhance my productivity,
but also my overall well-being. If you're ready to master your space, consider starting small. Commit to organizing one area at a time and incorporate your personal touches. This way, you'll build up a workspace that not only looks good, but serves as a wellspring of inspiration and productivity every day. Chapter 10. Overcoming Procrastination Understanding the Root Causes of Procrastination As I sat at my desk, the glaring deadline looming ahead felt like a weight in my chest. I often found myself searching for the latest recipe video or scrolling through social media, feeling a strange mix of guilt and relief. Everyone experiences this dance with procrastination in some form, but understanding what drives it is essential. The truth is, procrastination rarely stems from sheer laziness. It's a coping mechanism, a way to manage feelings of anxiety, fear of failure, or even perfectionism. When faced with a challenging task, those nagging emotions can induce a strong desire to avoid the work entirely, leading us to engage in more comforting activities instead. For example, I once struggled with a significant project that felt overwhelming. The more I thought about it, the more my mind filled with doubts. Similarly, you might find yourself stuck in this pattern thinking, what if I don't do it perfectly? Or what if I fail? These thoughts can paralyze us, turning simple tasks into monumental obstacles. By recognizing these triggers, we can begin to unravel the hesitations that lead us astray. Instead of merely pushing through the discomfort, we can start breaking tasks into smaller, more manageable pieces. The act of starting becomes less daunting when we focus on a single step rather than the giant whole. Practical examples come in handy here. When I learned to set smaller, achievable goals, like dedicating just 30 minutes to a task, I noticed a shift. Not only did it build my confidence, but it also provided momentum. This small change can work wonders for you too. Try using a timer to create bursts of focused work followed by short breaks. This technique, often called the Pomodoro technique, can keep your mind from feeling overwhelmed while also helping reset your emotional state. The important thing is to remember that procrastination is a common struggle, but understanding the root causes gives us the power to take proactive steps toward overcoming it. Techniques to break the procrastination cycle. I remember a time when I kept pushing a project to the back burner because it felt overwhelming. Each day, I would tell myself I'd start tomorrow, but that tomorrow never came. The turning point came when I discovered that breaking my work into smaller, more manageable tasks made the process less daunting. Instead of aiming to finish an entire report, I focused on drafting just the introduction. By doing so, I shifted my mindset from the enormous task at hand to small, actionable steps. This technique not only reduced my anxiety, but also helped me make tangible progress, proving that even the smallest action can disrupt the inertia of procrastination. One method that I found incredibly effective is the Pomodoro technique. By setting a timer for just 25 minutes of focused work, followed by a five minute break, I could maintain my concentration without feeling burnt out. This approach not only makes tasks feel less overwhelming, but it also introduces a rhythm that keeps you engaged. For instance, I once had to prepare for a big presentation and using the Pomodoro technique allowed me to zone in on each section of my presentation without succumbing to distractions. Another powerful strategy is the five minute rule. When I really don't want to tackle a task, I tell myself I only need to work on it for five minutes. More often than not, once I start, I find myself getting into the flow and continuing long after those five minutes are up. It's remarkable how just a small push can lead to significant progress. Incorporating these techniques into your life can help transform your relationship with time and productivity. Simple adjustments can yield powerful results. For instance, consider setting clear, specific goals each week and holding yourself accountable. When I started tracking my progress visually, like through a checklist or a calendar, it fueled my motivation. Every time I crossed off a completed task, I felt a surge of accomplishment. This practice firmly roots you in a proactive frame of mind, enabling you to recognize and celebrate even the smallest victories. By experimenting with these strategies, you don't just combat procrastination, you cultivate a sense of control over your time and actions. Take one technique today and see how it feels to reclaim your productivity.
sharing my battle with procrastination. I've spent countless hours scrolling through social media, watching yet another episode of a TV show, or just idly staring at my to-do list while thoughts of work loomed over me like a shadow. It's comforting to realize that this struggle is not unique to me. It's a widespread challenge that many people grapple with daily. The pressure to perform, the fear of failure, and the overwhelming choices all seem to choke my motivation. We often believe that we should have it all figured out by now, and when we don't, guilt settles in, making it even harder to start. Sharing these thoughts can be liberating, reminding us that vulnerability is a bridge to understanding. So many of us can relate to that all too familiar cycle of planning, hesitating, and finally giving up. It's important to acknowledge these feelings and recognize that they create a connection between us. There's power in knowing that behind every successful story lies a series of struggles, often masked by the polished final product. There were days when I accomplished everything I set out to do and felt unstoppable. Then came the days where I accomplished nothing but more self-doubt. This ebb and flow have taught me that progress isn't linear. Each failure was a lesson, nudging me to adapt my strategies and find what truly worked for me. I realized that creating a productive environment, limiting distractions, and setting specific goals were essential steps on this path. For example, I began breaking tasks into smaller, manageable pieces rather than viewing projects as daunting mountains to climb. It's okay to acknowledge when we slip up and fall back into old habits. It's part of the growth process. In fact, each setback fueled my determination to build better systems and find new methods that aligned with my work style. From investing in a simple planner to incorporating focused work sessions followed by short breaks, I found tools that transformed my approach to productivity. Instead of becoming overwhelmed when faced with a task, I learned to reflect on my daily habits and adjust them. Today, I advocate for a blend of planning and spontaneity allowing room for flexibility without sacrificing productivity. This approach not only keeps the work engaging, but also respects my personal rhythm. The next time you find yourself staring down a deadline or feeling the pressure of procrastination creeping in, remember, it's okay to start small. Focus on one task, even if it seems trivial, and let it be a stepping stone toward larger goals. Celebrate those small victories. They pave the way for greater accomplishments. Life is too precious to spend in a cycle of hesitation, and once you realize that the journey is ongoing, you can embrace the rhythm of progress with confidence. Chapter 11, Managing Stress and Time. The Relationship Between Stress and Time Management. I remember a time when my to-do list seemed endless, and every item felt like a weight anchoring me down. Stress began to cloud my judgment making it hard to prioritize tasks. This overwhelming feeling of urgency often led to hasty decisions, resulting in less than satisfactory outcomes. As I navigated through the chaos, I started to notice that my stress levels were directly linked to my time management skills. The more I felt overwhelmed, the more I struggled to allocate my time wisely. In essence, stress had a knack for hijacking my schedule, leaving me frazzled and unproductive. Once I began recognizing the signs of stress creeping into my daily routine, I took steps to address it head on. Simple techniques such as prioritizing tasks, breaking them into manageable segments, and allowing myself moments of rest became game changers. These strategies not only alleviated stress, but also empowered me to take control of my time. The feeling of accomplishment from completing manageable chunks of work brought a refreshing sense of calm. Recognizing that stress and time management are closely intertwined empowered me to cultivate a more balanced approach to my responsibilities. When I realized I had the ability to influence my stress levels through effective time management, I felt a surge of optimism and control over my life. To keep stress at bay and maintain good time management, I found that planning my week in advance was invaluable. Setting aside a few minutes each Sunday to outline my priorities allowed me to walk into Monday with a clear mind and a focused purpose. It's amazing how carving out dedicated time to reflect on what truly matters can transform the way you approach your days. And remember, it's okay to adjust your plans as needed. Flexibility is key. As you explore this relationship further, prioritize self-care 
and build a toolkit of stress relief strategies that resonate with you. When you feel stress creeping in, revisit your time management techniques and notice how it can help you regain control. You have the power to steer your life in a direction that feels more manageable and fulfilling. Mindfulness techniques to reduce stress. Incorporating mindfulness practices can significantly help mitigate stress. I've learned that when I intentionally focus on the present moment, I begin to experience clearer thinking and improve time management. It's amazing how much clarity comes from simply pausing to breathe and observe my surroundings. When stress hits, it often feels overwhelming, but those few moments of mindfulness help me regain control. I notice my thoughts become less scattered and I can prioritize my tasks more effectively. Instead of racing through my to-do list, I find I can tackle each item with a sense of calm and purpose. There are countless practical techniques that promote mindfulness in our everyday lives. One effective method I've found is the practice of mindful breathing. Taking a few minutes each day to focus solely on my breath anchors me. As I inhale deeply and exhale slowly, I tune out the chaos around me. Another technique I like is mindful walking. When I take a stroll, I pay attention to the sensations of my feet making contact with the ground. This simple act reminds me to stay present and appreciate my surroundings. Whether it's enjoying the rustling of leaves or the warmth of the sun, these experiences enhance my connection to the moment. The goal is to integrate these practices seamlessly into our routines. By starting small and gradually building up, we can establish a sustainable mindfulness practice that empowers us to manage our stress effectively. In everyday life, it can sometimes seem daunting to start incorporating mindfulness. A practical tip is to set aside just five minutes a day, maybe during a lunch break or first thing in the morning, to practice these mindfulness techniques. Creating a small ritual can make it easier. For instance, I always take a moment with my morning coffee or tea, allowing myself to simply enjoy the warmth of the cup and the rich aroma. These small actions create a sense of control and optimism, guiding me toward mastering my time with confidence and ease. So consider grounding yourself with these practices and see how they transform your approach to stress and time management. How stress affected my time management. Stress has a way of creeping into our lives, often disguised as a motivator or a challenge to overcome. I remember those days when I felt overwhelmed by deadlines and responsibilities. My personal experiences with stress revealed an essential truth about time management. Self-care is not a luxury, but a necessity. The more I neglected my mental and emotional well-being, the harder it became to keep up with my tasks. I found myself constantly racing against the clock, feeling as though every minute was a battle I was losing. When stress levels rise, it becomes increasingly difficult to focus, prioritize, and execute tasks efficiently. I learned the hard way that sacrificing self-care for productivity leads to burnout, making time management nothing more than a cruel joke. Through trial and error, I discovered that managing stress could significantly enhance my productivity. Implementing techniques like mindfulness and regular breaks not only helped me feel more relaxed, but also allowed me to approach my tasks with clarity and purpose. For example, I started to allocate specific time slots for work and breaks. When I returned from a break, I was often surprised at how much more I could accomplish in a shorter amount of time. The key insight here is that stress management isn't just about reducing anxiety. It's about creating a structured environment where productivity can thrive. If you're grappling with time management issues, consider integrating calming practices into your routine. Take a moment to breathe deeply, go for a walk, or enjoy a hobby. You'll find that giving yourself these moments of respite empowers you to tackle your tasks with renewed energy and focus. Realizing the interconnection between stress and time management has transformed my approach to both areas. I learned that when I prioritize my well-being, I reclaim not just my time, but also my sense of control. Incorporating stress management techniques has been a game changer, allowing me not only to manage my responsibilities more effectively, but also to enjoy the process. Remember, mastering time management isn't just about getting everything done. It's about creating a fulfilling life that respects your needs.
One simple yet powerful tip is to set a timer for focused work sessions, followed by brief breaks. This method, known as the Pomodoro technique, encourages sustained concentration while preventing overwhelm. By fostering a healthy relationship with stress, you too can reclaim your time and enhance your productivity. Chapter 12, The Art of Delegation. Knowing when to delegate tasks. In my early career, I used to believe that handling everything on my own was a badge of honor. I thought that by doing it all, I would prove my worth and dedication. But what I quickly discovered was that this mindset often left me overwhelmed and fatigued, while I miraculously still managed to produce quality work. The trick is understanding that not every task requires your personal touch. Some tasks can be handed off, freeing up your mental bandwidth for the strategic initiatives that drive your main objectives forward. As I learned more about effective delegation, I realized that some tasks, like scheduling meetings or organizing data, could be carried out just as effectively by a capable team member. By identifying these areas, I've been able to focus my energy on projects that require my unique skill set, ultimately leading to better results and higher job satisfaction. It's crucial to approach delegation with the right mindset. I remember a time when I was drowning in a sea of responsibilities, trying to juggle everything from team reports to client follow-ups. It felt almost impossible. That's when a mentor stepped in and shared his views on delegation, emphasizing the importance of trust and communication. He taught me that effective delegation isn't just about offloading tasks. It's about empowering others and fostering an environment where everyone feels valued. When you delegate, communicate clearly what you expect. This doesn't mean micromanaging. Instead, it means giving your team the tools and support they need to succeed. Striking a balance between providing guidance and allowing autonomy can help to enhance the overall capability of your team. I've seen firsthand how this approach not only reduces my stress, but also builds trust and collaboration within the team, transforming our productivity levels and carried spirits. As I wrap up this thought, remember that delegating is a skill that comes with practice. Don't fear giving up control, embrace it. Start small by delegating low priority tasks and gradually work your way up to more significant responsibilities. You'll find that by doing so, you create a more dynamic work environment where everyone thrives and grows. Finally, always reflect on your delegation process. Ask your team for feedback on what could improve their experience. This way, you not only develop your skills as a delegator, but also foster a culture of open communication and development within your team. Strategies for effective delegation. When I first ventured into leadership, I struggled with the idea of delegation. I believed that if I wanted something done right, I had to do it myself. This mindset created an immense burden, leaving me exhausted and my team stunted in growth. Gradually, I realized that by entrusting my team with responsibilities, I was not only lightening my load, but also empowering them to take ownership of their work. Trust serves as the foundation of effective delegation. When team members feel trusted, they are more likely to rise to the occasion, showcase their strengths, and develop their skills. By employing techniques such as open communication and active listening, I began to nurture an environment where everyone could flourish. Encouraging them to step up and make decisions allowed for accountability to take root. This mutual trust not only strengthened our relationships, but also enhanced our collective performance. I learned that giving a clear structure is just as crucial as expressing trust. Clarity removes ambiguity, allowing team members to understand not only what they are responsible for, but also how to go about completing their tasks. Every time I provided specific instructions and outlined expectations, I noticed a significant improvement in execution and morale. Instead of micromanaging or hovering, I began creating frameworks that included key objectives, deadlines, and resources available to them. This not only clarified their roles, but helped them explore creative solutions on their own. I remember a project where I outlined the goals and expected outcomes, but left room for my team to strategize their approach. Their innovative ideas surpassed my expectations and reinforced our collaborative spirit. Remember, successful delegation isn't about simply unloading tasks. 
It's about equipping your team with the tools and the confidence they need to thrive. Effective delegation is a transformative process that leads to efficiency while building a culture of mutual respect and accountability. Start small by identifying tasks you can delegate and pay attention to the reactions of your team members. You might just find that they're eager to step up when given the chance. The key lies in your approach. Cultivate trust, provide clear guidelines, and watch as your team grows and excels. My experiences with delegating work. In my early career, I often found myself juggling numerous responsibilities, convinced that the only way to maintain quality was to do everything myself. The first time I tried to delegate a significant project, I was filled with anxiety. I had a capable team member ready to take over, yet I hesitated. The fear of things slipping through the cracks gripped me. I remember the moment vividly. I stood at my desk staring at my colleague, trying to vocalize my thoughts while my mind raced with gore. What if they miss an important detail? However, I took a deep breath and decided to take the plunge. To my surprise, not only did my colleague manage the project very well, but I also learned that giving up control didn't equate to failure. It opened up space for creativity and collaboration that I never realized could exist. To master the art of delegation, it's essential to first understand the tasks at hand. Identify what truly needs your specific expertise and what can be entrusted to others. Communicating clearly with your team is crucial. Set expectations and be available for guidance. I've found that regular check-ins, particularly during the first stages of a delegated task, can alleviate much of the anxiety associated with letting go. Sharing my experiences, the mishaps and victories, has helped me craft a framework that encourages others to step up. When trust is placed in capable hands, not only does the workload lighten, but it also fosters team growth and innovation. Remember, successful delegation is not simply about unloading tasks. It's about empowering others to thrive. Chapter 13, Adapting Your Time Management Strategies. The Importance of Flexibility in Planning. I remember a time when I had meticulously scheduled my week only to have everything thrown into chaos due to an unexpected family emergency. The initial frustration was overwhelming, but I realized that the true test of my planning skills wasn't how perfectly I could stick to my schedule. It was how well I could adapt and still maintain my momentum. Embracing flexibility allowed me to shuffle tasks around, prioritize what truly mattered, and ultimately come through the other side, not just unscathed, but with a greater capacity to handle challenges. It's crucial to understand that life is inherently unpredictable and our ability to adjust our plans and still focus on our goals is what truly sets us apart. By being open to change, we don't just survive disruptions, we thrive within them. I've often told friends that having a backup plan isn't just a smart idea, it's a necessity. On one particular occasion, I was preparing for a big presentation. I thought I had every angle covered, but as luck would have it, the technology failed me on the day of the pitch. Rather than panicking, I relied on my adaptability. I switched to an alternative approach that I had prepared as a just-in-case scenario. This experience drove home the point that when we expect the unexpected, we can approach setbacks with a sense of calm. Rather than seeing obstacles as barriers, we can view them as opportunities to demonstrate our resilience and creativity. It's essential to remind ourselves that flexibility is not a sign of weakness, but rather a powerful tool we can wield to navigate our paths with confidence. Life, with all its intricacies, requires a mindset that embraces change. Practicing this adaptability not only takes off some of the pressure, but also empowers us to reclaim control when change strikes. A practical tip I've found to be beneficial is trying to visualize multiple outcomes for your plans. When creating a to-do list or setting weekly goals, think of at least one alternative route you could take if your original plan falls through. This kind of preparation not only keeps you on track, but also sparks creative problem solving when you're faced with unexpected challenges. By fostering an attitude of flexibility, we set ourselves up for success, knowing that even when things go awry, we have the tools and mindset to keep moving forward. Adjusting strategies based on feedback. I've learned that reflecting on what works and what doesn't 
can be one of the most powerful tools in my time management toolkit. Each time I review a project or a week's worth of activities, I get a clearer picture of my effectiveness. For instance, when I decided to track my productivity with a simple journal, I discovered patterns in my workflow. I realized that my most productive hours were early in the morning, but I was often wasting precious time on social media during those hours. Adjusting my schedule to prioritize important tasks in the morning led to a significant boost in my productivity and satisfaction. That simple change created a ripple effect, enhancing the overall success of my long-term goals. Feedback can often feel daunting, especially if it's critical, but I've come to see it as an invitation to grow rather than a criticism. For example, when I sought feedback from colleagues on my time management skills, I initially braced myself for negative comments. Instead, I found they appreciated my commitment to improvement and had valuable insights to share. They suggested ways to streamline our collaborations, which not only helped me manage my time better, but also strengthened our teamwork. Embracing feedback has encouraged me to adopt a mindset that values continuous improvement. It reminds me that mastery is a journey, not a destination. I encourage you to seek feedback actively. Your growth hinges on how open you are to learning from the experiences and perspectives of others. Learning from my adaptation failures. I remember a time when I attempted to embrace a new work routine that I thought would increase my productivity. I was excited and fully committed, but after a few weeks, it became clear that this method didn't suit my style. The structure felt too rigid, and I found myself struggling to maintain my enthusiasm. Rather than just moving on, I took a step back to analyze what went wrong. I learned that it wasn't the idea itself that failed. It was my inability to adapt it to my unique way of working. This experience reinforced the importance of being resilient in the face of adversity. I discovered that resilience isn't just about bouncing back. It's about reflecting on mistakes, adjusting strategies, and moving forward with newfound knowledge. I began to understand that each failed adaptation was an invitation to learn something new about myself and my preferences. Embracing this mindset transformed my perspective on challenges. For instance, another time I tried to implement a strict time management app to organize my projects. Initially, it seemed promising, but I found myself ignoring it more often than not. Instead of seeing this as a complete failure, I assessed what aspects of the app felt overwhelming. After some trial and error, I realized that I needed a more flexible approach. This led me to a simpler system that allowed for adjustments based on my day-to-day -day needs. The ability to transform failures into stepping stones paved the way for incredible personal growth and understanding. So remember, the next time you feel discouraged by setbacks or failed attempts, take a moment to reflect on what you can learn. Each lesson brings you closer to mastering your time and ultimately, your life. Adopting a growth mindset is crucial in this journey. Look for the moments where you've struggled and ask yourself what you can learn from them. Instead of feeling defeated by your failures, let them be a compass guiding you toward more effective strategies. Start small. Reflect on little setbacks in your day and consider how they can teach you. The next time things don't go as planned, jot down your thoughts you may find a hidden opportunity for improvement that can change the course of your adaptation journey. Chapter 14, Evaluating Your Progress, Setting Up a Reflection Process. I remember a time in my life when I was caught up in the daily grind, focusing on completing tasks without taking a moment to celebrate my wins. It wasn't until I began to pause and reflect that I noticed how many goals I had actually accomplished, big and small. This realization shifted my mindset entirely. Reflection is not just about looking back, it's about learning from each experience and using that insight to fuel future growth. By regularly evaluating what worked and what didn't, I could adjust my approach, ensuring that each step I took moved me closer to my goals. When we set aside time to reflect, we create a powerful opportunity to assess our progress, recognize our strengths, and identify areas that could use a little more attention. This process is not only beneficial, but it's transformational. Reflecting on my own experiences, I've realized that when I make space for introspection, 
I can better understand my priorities and values. I recall a particularly hectic week when I didn't reflect on my activities. I felt scattered, overwhelmed, and unfulfilled. That's when I realized the importance of carving out time to reflect not just on my tasks, but on my decision-making processes. By asking myself questions like, what did I enjoy, or what stressed me out? I began to notice patterns. This deeper understanding equipped me with the knowledge to prioritize tasks more effectively, ultimately enhancing my productivity. It's funny how just five or 10 minutes a day can lead to such clarity and confidence. The next time you feel overwhelmed, take a moment for reflection. You'll be amazed at how much insight can arise from a little quiet time. Tools for self-assessment. I remember when I first started my journey of self-improvement, I often felt lost. I wanted to understand where I truly stood, what my strengths were, and what areas needed growth. This is where self-assessment tools came into play. They offered me a framework to explore my progress without the bias of emotions clouding my judgment. They provide a mirror, reflecting not just the achievements, but also the opportunities for improvement. A well-designed assessment can reveal patterns in behavior, highlight accomplishments, and illuminate the path ahead, essentially acting as a guidepost. By tracking my development over time, I learned to calibrate my goals and adjust my actions based on what I discovered, I could see the tangible impact of my efforts. That feeling of seeing measurable progress not only motivated me, but also empowered me to take the next steps confidently. From journals that encourage reflective writing to online assessments designed for specific personal or professional development areas, each method has its unique benefits. One that particularly resonated with me was using the SWOT analysis a tool often reserved for business strategy, but equally impactful on a personal level. By assessing my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, I was able to clearly view my position. Another method I found effective was setting aside time at the end of each month to review my goals and analyze my progress alongside a trusted friend or mentor. This collaborative approach not only held me accountable, but also brought fresh perspectives that I hadn't considered before. The beauty of self-assessment tools is that they are adaptable. What works for one person might not resonate with another. Therefore, I encourage you to try different methods, see how they feel, and tailor your self-assessment process to what aligns best with your unique journey. If you're looking to start your self-assessment journey, remember that timing and consistency are key. It might be as simple as setting aside five minutes each day to reflect on what you learned or achieved. Over time, you'll find that even small reflections can lead to significant insights, guiding you toward your goals with a newfound clarity. My progress and lessons learned. Reflecting on my journey of personal growth, particularly in honing my time management skills, feels both liberating and enlightening. When I first started focusing on this aspect of my life, I was overwhelmed. I often felt like there weren't enough hours in the day. Each task seemed to pull me in different directions, and before I knew it, frustration clouded my ability to be productive. However, as I began to track my habits and assess where my time was going, I discovered a path to clarity. I learned to prioritize my commitments, setting boundaries that allowed me to mitigate distractions. This evolving understanding of my time led to insights that not only improved my productivity, but also enhanced my overall well-being. I began to appreciate the small victories, completing a task ahead of schedule, or devoting uninterrupted time to a personal project. Each of these moments became a building block of my growth, allowing me to cultivate a mindset that values discipline and intentionality. Sharing these lessons feels important as they might resonate with you on your own journey. Everyone has their unique path, and recognizing your progress, even if it feels small, can be a powerful motivator. I learned that tracking my progress helped reinforce my efforts and celebrate the milestones, no matter how seemingly minor. Creating a journaling habit, for instance, allowed me to look back and see how far I had come in managing my time more effectively. It's easy to feel stuck in the daily grind, but when you take a moment to reflect, you might find that you've made strides you hadn't noticed. Each of us has the potential to cultivate better habits that align with our goals, and these can lead to profound changes. 
As you forge ahead, I encourage you to embrace your journey of improvement and recognize that every step counts, building momentum toward mastering not just your time, but your life. One practical tip I found particularly helpful was setting theme days that allowed me to focus on specific tasks without the usual multitasking chaos. For example, I designated Mondays for planning and strategizing, while Tuesdays became my creative days. This not only made my schedule more manageable, but also helped me invest my full attention into one area at a time. Try experimenting with your schedule to identify which days feel natural for certain tasks, and watch how that focus enhances your efficiency. Chapter 15, Continuing Your Time Management Journey. Lifelong Learning and Time Management. The need for continuous learning is more critical now than ever. In a world that never stops changing, I've come to realize that honing my time management skills is not just about organizing my schedule, it's about being adaptable and receptive to new patterns of thought and work that emerge over time. For instance, I remember a few years back when I first started using digital calendars. At first, it felt a bit overwhelming, but with practice, I found that these tools allowed me to plan my days much more efficiently. They not only kept me on track, but also opened up avenues for learning new features that helped streamline my tasks. Emphasizing the need for continuous learning ensures that the skills we adopt in time management remain relevant and effective. Just as our responsibilities evolve, so should our approaches to managing our time. Creating a culture of growth can significantly impact how we handle our time and resources. I've experienced this firsthand in various team settings where embracing a mindset of curiosity and exploration led to the development of innovative tools and strategies. When I encouraged my team to share tips on productivity hacks, I was amazed at the fresh perspectives that emerged. This exchange not only fostered creativity, but also made time management a collective effort where everyone contributed insights that enhanced our overall efficiency. With new tools surfacing regularly, being open to exploring and learning about them can be a game changer. This approach empowers us to tackle our tasks more effectively, which ultimately leads to a more fulfilling and controlled use of our time. Remember, the willingness to learn is itself a valuable time management strategy. Look for opportunities to grow daily, whether through online courses, podcasts, or simply conversing with others about their practices, resources for further growth. In my own journey, discovering the right materials has often made all the difference. Books like Getting Things Done by David Allen opened my eyes to the power of a structured approach to tasks. Online courses, such as those offered by platforms like Coursera and Udemy, provide a wealth of insights from experts who have spent years perfecting their craft. There are podcasts that focus solely on productivity where real-world applications and personal experiences are shared, giving a sense of community and support. When I started to soak in this kind of content, I began to transform my chaotic routines into more manageable systems. This isn't just about time management. It's about fostering a mindset geared toward growth and efficiency. It's like stepping into a vast world where every piece of information can trigger new ideas and strategies for managing time effectively. Exploring blogs dedicated to productivity can uncover unique techniques that resonate personally, as well as forums where others share their challenges and victories. One powerful approach I found helpful was to set aside a regular time each week dedicated to learning something new about time management. This habit not only expanded my toolkit, but also inspired me to reflect on my practices and what could be improved. Just remember, the quest for better time management is a personal journey. Each resource is a tool, and the more tools you have at your disposal, the better equipped you'll be to shape your time into something that works for you. Consider making a commitment to devote a few minutes each day to read, listen, or watch something related to time management. You might start by subscribing to a newsletter that discusses productivity tips or setting a goal to read a chapter from a book each week. I've also found that journaling my thoughts on what I learn can cement new ideas and create a reflective habit that enhances understanding. When we actively engage with new concepts, it's like igniting a spark that empowers us to take control of our time 
with confidence and clarity, committing to personal time management mastery. I remember when I first started my journey toward mastering time management. It was not just about organizing my calendar or prioritizing tasks. It was about taking full responsibility for how I used my time. Each day began as a blank canvas, and I realized that filling it with meaningful activities was my choice. I found that committing to this mastery was like making a promise to myself. I wrote down my goals and set clear intentions, and slowly but surely I began to see the fruit of my efforts. I felt accountable not just to my deadlines, but to the vision I had for my life. By tracking my progress, I kept myself motivated. There are days when distractions come knocking, but that commitment reminds me of what I value most. As I look back on how far I've come, I find joy in the challenges that once troubled me. Each misstep offered lessons that shaped my strategies. Each success bolstered my confidence. Imagine standing still on a path, contemplating the experiences that have brought you here. What have you learned about yourself? How do you want to evolve? Visualizing where you want to be not only keeps the flame of motivation alive, it also helps to shape actionable steps you can take toward that future. I often imagine what skills I want to develop and what new methods I want to try. This practice not only creates excitement for the journey ahead, but also serves as a guiding light. Remember, every single day is an opportunity to take a step, no matter how small, toward mastering your time and transforming your life. Embracing this journey begins with one essential idea. Time is your most valuable resource. You have the power to mold it according to your dreams and goals. Set aside a few moments each week to reflect on your progress and adjust your strategies. Consider keeping a journal to document your thoughts, progress, and adjustments. This way, your commitment to time management mastery becomes not just a process, but a lifestyle. As we come to the end of Mastering the Clock, Strategies for Effective Time Management, I hope you feel equipped and inspired to take charge of your time like never before. Time management is not just about filling every minute with productivity. It's about making intentional choices that align with your goals and values, allowing you to lead a more balanced and fulfilling life. Remember, mastering time management is a lifelong journey. There will be days when everything falls into place and others when things don't go as planned. The key is to remain flexible learn from your experiences, and continue refining your approach. By implementing the strategies we've explored together, you'll find yourself not only managing time more effectively, but also living more mindfully and intentionally. Thank you for allowing me, through Mindful Literary, to be part of your journey. Continue to embrace each day with purpose, make every moment count, and keep striving for your personal best. Your success in mastering time management is not just a destination, but an ongoing process of growth and self-discovery. Here's to mastering your clock and living life on your terms.